trying to introduce is how does a radio station function, what are the rules and regulations behind it, and how does KUGS fit within Western Washington University and the associated students as an AS program being student operated. When it comes to the staff that is hired through the AS personnel process for KUGS, there's seven core staff members. And what I do with them is I'll have new student um, staff member training where it's more of an introduction on like a new hire night where they all go through, this is how you get your keys, this is the expectation of your office hours, um, make sure you look at your job descriptions, we'll talk about that. Any additional meetings they may have, weekly meetings as far as staff meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings with their direct student supervisor, and then one-on-one -on -one meetings with myself and how the station will function. Um, make sure that they all know how to, most of the, the staff members have been through the first training as a volunteer so they can help train and work with the volunteers if there's any questions. So it's very team oriented. It's part of um, how KU just works. We have to work as a team because we all have to function and keep the station running 24 7. So every time the station's on the air, there's a human being sitting there that's been trained by a student. So they have to go through that process and be available for those volunteers. It's also about the um, multicultural and diversity of working with a diverse population of students, you know, learning how all students may learn differently, um, communication styles, what are, what are the communication styles that you may have when you're working with students. So we work on those kinds of activities. One of the um, main things for me is that both the volunteers and the student staff have an understanding about how programming can be diverse and that offering that, that to the community at large, Western Campus as well as the Bellingham community through the programming that's available here on campus and through the station. So we may do that through our public affairs programming where it's um, underrepresented voices, including LGBT voices, we have um, National Native News, um, Latino USA, we have a Spanish language program which is news and public affairs. Um, also Democracy Now! So it's voices that aren't readily heard in the media. So it's about media literacy as well as diversity and programming. So do, why should people even listen to the radio station? Come up with reasons why their programming of what's offered here, what students do, is important to the media landscape. Um, another um, exercise that we'll do during the retreat is that they'll have come in having um, listened to and observed other college radio stations via the web. So what does their programming sound like? And who's on the air? You know, what does the staff look like? Who's managing the station? So that they can get an idea of how KHS fits into that whole landscape as a, a student-operated radio station and the opportunity that's available for students. So we do that through that training. Um, and then to kind of finalize that all, they'll go on a professional development tour of radio stations in Seattle. So they'll find stations who are non-commercial edu educational stations that are not necessarily student operated. So they'll go to KBCS, which is at Bellevue College, and it's a community-based station. They'll look on paper, it looks just like KUGS, but they're not students who are doing the jobs and they're not students who are operating the station. Then they'll run to a big powerhouse station like KUOW, licensed to the University of Washington as a big NPR station, you know, multi-million dollar budget. Um, tour the facilities, look at the programming, um, know that um, this is like, there's, that's a place that they can go to. They can walk through and it's like, oh, they have the same kind of microphones, oh, they use the same kind of headphones, so that the equipment is comparable because this may, may be the first time they've ever walked into a radio broadcasting facility. So to see how other stations operate and how KUGS is very similar, is a, the opportunity is for the, their voice to be heard and to be programmed in the station. And then they'll go to KEXP, which musically is very similar to KUGS. Many alums are at KEXP from KUGS, so the production director was the morning show host here. And um, so folks can come, can see that, okay, there are opportunities beyond, you know, just um, the dream of being in radio or something or working in music. So that's, then they can come back and they can really feel proud of what they have and they, then they, uh, will then pass that along to their volunteers because they'll say this is a really unique opportunity. We went to a bunch of stations, we didn't see any students operating the station. So they really take their role very seriously. Well my background is been, has always been working with students. So when I started working with students in California at a station, it was through um, a the communications department um, was the kind of facilitator of the radio station, although students um, 
were managers and on the air. But there was also courses that they had to take and broadcast practices. So part of that was just working hand hand in hand with students. I've always been kind of at the station with the students and kind of saying, you know, this is your opportunity. This is your, you know, you're the voice. You know, how can we give you that um, responsibility? And you know, with that comes, you know, with that power comes responsibility. So, and you know, expectations and consequences and all those things that come along with. Um, having the opportunities and just kind of helping them grow and, and have them take that responsibility. So that's kind of where the passion comes from. Um, I've also worked in the kind of community base where there's been underrepresented voices and, and taking a, um, for me it's been really important to have those voices be heard. I think that folks don't often feel like they can be involved unless they hear or see themselves on the stage. So if they hear themselves on air it's like, oh, then I can be involved. That's why it's important to have, again, the student voice. Because for myself, how I got involved in radio is because I heard myself on the air. Essentially, I heard my peers on the air saying, oh, if they can do it, I bet I can volunteer and do it. And so that's how I got involved. Um, I think that's how students do it. They hear word of mouth that their friends do a show, then it's like, oh, if, you know, there's an opportunity. And I think that because we have a pretty inclusive way of getting involved, you come in, you fill out a form, you sign up. You know, it's not, there's not an evaluation process about who can and who can't be um, a volunteer. It, the only evaluation that comes through is, you know, whether or not you've showed up to all the trainings and we help you through that process. I was a volunteer at the campus radio station when I was a graduate student and the training I received, I had a Sunday morning show and the student manager came in and at that time, not so long ago, but it was, you know, there were not a ton of CDs, so it was still vinyl. <laughs> So, um, so it was like, this is how you do the vinyl, and um, I'm going to be at home watching the game, but I'll be listening. Have fun. And that was the training I received, like 15 minutes of on air. No rules or regulations, not anything about how you operate a station, and you know, the show, I talked really fast and really high, and <laughs> and people would call, and I can't talk, I have, the music is running out. So part of that was I don't want folks to ever feel uncomfortable or feel like they've been thrown in the deep end. And so um, the opportunity that we have here is that we give them that quarter where they're very, you know, it's very structured in the sense that you have, you know, here's how the station operates, here are the rules and regulations. Next time it's walk through and here's how all the equipment at the station is set up and here's where the library is and here's where, how you get in and here's how, here are all the offices and your resources. And then, then they'll have a training on um, on-air um, sound. You know, write a script that doesn't. You know, they'll do two scripts where one's kind of a, would you, what would you do if you heard that on the air kind of thing, like, a, you know, not a bad, you know, profanity kind of thing, but just a kind of a goofy type of, you know, not making sense script. And then one that you would prefer to listen to. And so the students can, you know, do that kind of creating their own and read that to other students and get feedback from it. And then they'll do an internship where they'll sit in with an experienced DJ for an hour and have that experience where they can talk to him. And it's like, what is it you do? How do you set up your show? And the person kind of shows, this is all the equipment. This is what we have to do. These are the forms we fill out um, for each of our shows. And then the last um, part of the training process is they'll do a mock show for a half hour and they'll do all the things, you know, pull, put a playlist together, listen to the music. Then they'll go in the production studio and actually record a show so that the um, program director can evaluate that and then uh, fill out application that they've turned in everything that they need to do and they're going to set up for a show for the next quarter. Because the sixth part of being a volunteer is that before we, most of the new volunteers will have an overnight show so before we put them by themselves overnight we have them do their first show during the day with a member of staff sitting with them so if they have any questions or feel insecure about anything they're not alone for the very first time. Well, when the AS personnel office has the self-evaluations, and because the KUGS is a four-quarter, I often start them sometime in December for them. Well, they'll do an internal one, so they start thinking about that because sometimes when you've, you know, almost three quarters before they've done the self-evaluation, and so they've had some goals and they have some ideals that they wanted to accomplish when they started in the summer, and it's like, I think, you know, towards the end of winter, of fall quarter, they can start thinking, you know, okay, did I get those accomplished? and can I do them in winter quarter before we start hiring again. So it's more for them to think about things and then we can have conversations. So um, Cooper and I will sit in with all of the staff during their self-evaluations um, and then have conversations about 
how they're doing and what they want to do. And um, I think most of them will say, you know, it's the best job I ever had. <laughs> it's going to be the best job I ever had. And, you know, I think I laugh because a lot of it's like, yeah, because it's 15 hours a week, you know, <laughs> it's not a 40 hour week job and, you know, all that. But I think also, I think the environment, I think they've created a great team. They do a lot of staff bonding together. They'll go out for ice cream. They'll go have, you know, burritos after, you know, some AS training. They'll decide, let's go have dinner after this and stuff so they can keep themselves really connected as a team. And I think the trip down to Seattle is the culminating thing in the summer because most of the people are new and may not know each other. They're in a car together, they're there all day long, so two hour drive, they have to have some kind of conversation. They're all seeing something for the first time, most of them, you know, as far as the radio sta other radio stations and people treating them. They, I think there's some interesting thing like when they go to KXP because the person that does the tour is an alum, is very, like opens all the doors and says, my old college radio station's here, you know, and stuff. It's all, and then people's like, mine too, you know, and so they all get all excited and everything, and people treat them. That always wasn't the case because before Chris was the, at the station, sometimes I think they thought these were people, these were students who wanted to work in radio. They didn't realize they were students who were running a radio station and stuff. So I think that there's a real difference when people know what they're doing. At KBCS, often they'll talk to them and it's like, oh, what is your position at the station and what do you do and how do you, and so there's a conversation about how they have to articulate what their role is at the radio station. Uh, for all the volunteers, we do um, all station meetings, which are usually the second full week of the quarter, and um, that's where it's really the state of the station, where the staff can say, this is what's going to be happening this quarter, here's some things to look for if you're new, but maybe it's about introduction. And so, you know, if the 80 people show up, you know, it's like an hour long worth of introductions, but it's like, all the people who are here from midnight to 5.30 in the morning stand up, and it's like, yay, you know, so they get that. Um, they also, that's, you go to your meeting and you get your t-shirt. T-shirts are only for volunteers, so it's an incentive to say thank you for being a volunteer, and also kind of a promotional thing, like, hey, where'd you get the t-shirts? Like, oh, you got a volunteer at the station. Well, I really am kind of a radio junkie. I mean, I do radio, um, and I'm, uh, I guess, hoping that the medium can continue and so that by creating this positive environment that um, the next generation can be out there and that there'll be um, a bunch of really well-trained folks who can go work in radio.